After 20 days at sea, here are a few of our results from Expedition NA133, Lu'ua Ea Ehiki Ike Kai Lipo Lipo. This Hawaiian language name represents the journey to and the work in the Kai Lipo Lipo, or the deep blue ocean. This expedition used the multi-beam and sub-bottom profiler to map the Liliokalani seamount chain inside the Papahanao Moku Akea Marine National Monument, which is northwest of Hawaii. Papahanao Moku Akea encompasses over 580,000 square miles of the Pacific Ocean, making it one of the largest marine conservation areas in the whole world and an area larger than all of the United States national parks combined. Let's join Nautilus Mapping Coordinator Aaron Heffron to walk us through a deep dive of what the mapping data has revealed so far. Okay, doing a data walkthrough of our mapping effort on NA133. So about 12 days ago, we left Oahu. Um, that's what we have here. Um, and it started mapping when we got outside of Kauai. Um, because if you look in this area um, at our base map, this area has all been pretty well mapped. So when we see this really detailed topography in our base maps, then we know that uh, mapping's already been done. So we waited until we were further outside of Oahu and through the Kauai Channel um, to turn on our sonars and start mapping. So where you see this bright data, that's where we started um, with our sonars on. And you can see um, as we move along, we're starting to approach gaps in the data. So just taking a look, when you see this really nice uh, kind of high resolution, bumpy, really, really detailed topography, that's where we've been, where mapping's been done. Uh, whereas when you see this kind of very smooth topography, that is just an estimate of what the seafloor is, typically coming from satellite altimetry, um, but not not truly mapped data. So those are the gaps that we, we tried to hit as we were making our way out. So we started mapping, uh, I believe on the, the 24th um, and just heading out and some just really nice ridge features and things that we hit on the way. And as we got a little further along, uh, we started to see some really, uh, really cool features that didn't necessarily show up. Um, so here's one example of a a ridge that we got to cross on our transit. If I turn off our data, this um, is the, the satellite altimetry estimate. And so from the, the satellite altimetry estimate, we have something was there that did show up in the, in the altimetry data, but it didn't get much detail on it. We then look at our data in that location, turn off the, the background. Um, see, we got some really nice detail over that marine ridge. These features were quite cool, and uh, there wasn't too much indication of them in the, the base map. So if I, again, um, turn off our data, could barely see just like a gentle indication that maybe something's there, just a slight bump. And if we turn our data back on, um, there's these cool little half ring features with um, what looks like maybe a little uh, volcanic mound or something in the middle. And these are quite cool and didn't really show up in the altimetry data at all. Continuing along our transit towards King George, we crossed over some mapped ridges. It's quite, quite beautiful, detailed data. And then this was a seamount um, that we crossed that was unmapped. So again, I'll, I'll turn off our data so you can see the difference. In the background, you see um, some features that were really nicely mapped, and I believe that um, might be Nautilus data from a few years ago that uh, mapped those seamounts in the back. But this seamount was unmapped. Again, there's an indication that it's there in the satellite altimetry, just not a lot of detail. But we specifically went over this one by request from our, our lead scientist and uh, got some nice, nice detail in passing over the ridge. Um, and just to be clear too, um, all of this data is exaggerated three times, which you could see on my screen here. So it makes it look a little more dramatic than it is, uh, but helps us to really see all the, all the nice detail we get. 
with our mulch beam map. Continuing on. And then finally, um, three or so days after we left Oahu, we made it to our, our first major seamount. And so this is the King George seamount. And you see both the, uh, the base data and our data. So I'll separate those out now. I'll start by showing the pre-mapping. So this is what it looked like before. Um, again, just from satellite altimetry, base data. And the grid that we're using to show this is the GMRT, or Global Multi-Resolution Topography Model. And that's a, a model that's continuously updated um, as new data comes in. Uh, so where there is multi-beam data, they add it in. And that's the example in the background here. The swath of data is was from the GMRT grid as well. And then they fill in the areas that are unmapped with other resources that are available. So that would be the satellite altimetry um, or occasionally maybe single beam data, things like that. So that was King George prior to our mapping efforts. And then King George after, turn off the background data, we can see that it was indeed a, a flat topped guillot. Uh, also get all this just really, really beautiful detail up and down the ridges. I actually find the bases of these seamounts to just be so cool with all of the, the detail of this uh, I don't know, really detailed ridge and topography and all the, the bumps and, and things at the base, I just think are the coolest. Cause that's, uh, you just don't get that detail in the, the estimates. All right, and moving on from King George, uh, we then completed mapping on King George and did about 15 to 16 hours of transit. Um, got some nice ridge topography. and then arrived at Loudoun Seamount. So we um, started this uh, quite a few days ago, uh, had to leave Loudoun for a while and flee south um, because of weather. So you can see our transit. Um, we then turned off our sonar as we went through part of the sanctuary. Um, we hung out south of the sanctuary for a while and then we returned to finish Loudoun. So and now I'll turn on the multi-beam data. And you can see the areas where there's a difference uh, between the satellite altimetry and the data we collected. And if I turn off the background map, so Loudoun was a pair of seamounts, uh, really, really close together with this kind of connecting saddle between them really beautiful detail on top of the, the GEO. Um, this was also a flat top seamount, um, but we see these nice uh, kind of uh, cones and stuff forming at the top. Quite interesting. Uh, we also thought this was, was pretty interesting, this little kind of divot and flat landing space up near the, the summit. And so I guess uh, what's important about mapping is that Prior to us doing this mapping, yes, there's there's an indication of what's there, but never the amount of detail um, that you can get with a multi-beam. Um, and this it becomes important when we want to explore these seamounts with our ROVs. We need to have a, a kind of better idea of what we're going to be putting the ROVs down on um, with, with more detail than what's available through the satellite altimetry estimates. So we um, we're doing this seamount mapping um, specifically to support our ROV expeditions next year so that we have really, really good base maps uh, for the navigators and ROV pilots um, to really know what kind of slopes and topography to expect once we, we take the vehicles down there for exploration. And just in general, um, I think mapping is important because it's the, the base map for everything. So as we try to understand the world oceans and um, improve climate models and everything, uh, the, the bathymetry really is the base. It's the, the the first layer. And it's just so interesting that that first layer is 80% guesswork at this point. Um, we've only really mapped about 20% of the world oceans. And so the rest of it is just an estimate. And it's a pretty good estimate, but it's not necessarily fact. Um, and you wouldn't have uh, 
the detail of a level like this where um, what looked like possibly just one really large seamount, going back to the base data. There's some indication that maybe they're separate, but not as much as what we can see once we have it really truly thoroughly mapped with the multi-beam. So we completed Loudon and we transited directly to Mercury, which is so close that we didn't even couldn't even start a new survey project. It was just so close to get start going up the, the side of Mercury. So we started with an exploratory line to cross the entire top. So that was this kind of line marching up this ridge. And we crossed over the top, came back down the other side to really get a feel for the extents. And now we're mapping our way um, from north to south on Mercury Seamount. And this data is not completely processed yet. So there we see an artifact of, of the multi-beam. There's a, an error there that's causing that spike. So as part of our work as surveyors um, and mappers, we will go and get rid of those. They're just anomalies. Um, sometimes the sonar picks up fish or, or things in the water column. Um, or just loses the bottom, especially over really steep topography like we have here. And so you'll get these spikes. And that's when we talk about cleaning multi-beam data, that's specifically addressing issues like this. So before this data is finalized, that spike will disappear. But, um. During expedition NA133, Lu'ua, Ea, Ehike, Ike, Kai, Lipo, Lipo, we mapped over 32,980 square kilometers across the United States exclusive economic zone. This data contributes not only to a global effort to map the world's oceans with our partner Seabed 2030, but also contains the maps needed for future ROV dives and exploration of the incredible region of Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument. More exploration soon. Thanks all.